How's everyone doing today? Hope you're doing well and I hope you're having a great day. If you're unfamiliar with me, my name is Bungle. I like to do whiteboard presentations on various topics and today we're going to be talking about Enlisted, the World War II free-to-play first-person shooter. You may be asking yourself, what is Enlisted? Enlisted is a good alternative to, let's say, Battlefield 5. It's free to play, it's arcadey, kind of keeps that historical realism of World War II, so that's pretty cool. Now, going into it, you click this video, you may want to know, what are we talking about today, Bungle? Well, we're going to be talking about the Mortar class. This class causes a lot of controversy on the Enlisted forums, with a lot of people demanding for its nerf, demanding for it to be removed. Ban the Mortar class! Ban it from the game now! Well. We're going to talk about it. We're going to give you an overview. We're going to talk about the capabilities of the motor class. And we're going to, lastly, the big enchilada on how to do well with the motor class. So let's get in with the overview of the motor class. Basically, a motor class is, I think you get higher in the levels. Um, I think for Normandy, the Normandy campaign right now, they're pretty early on, I think in, underneath level 10 or whatever. But for Battle of Moscow, they're kind of in like mid 15 levels. So, I'm going to have to grind a little bit in the Battle of Moscow to get it, but for the Battle of Normandy, if I think if I recall correctly, I hope I did, and it's in the first 10 levels, right? So normally gets some, uh, Normandy campaign gets the uh, mortar class quicker, Moscow are going to have to grind a little bit for it. So you may be wondering, okay, you know, I was talking about people raging everything about the mortar class. Why, Bungo? Why are people so mad about it? Well, it's the indirect fire capabilities of the mortar class. And you may be wondering, what's, you know, indirect fire, if you've never heard of it? Basically, there's two types of fire, direct fire and direct. Direct is if I'm looking at you right now and I have my M1 Garand and I'm shooting at you, right? And you're looking back at me and you're shooting back. It's direct, right? The rounds are coming right at you. Indirect, right? Indirect is if I'm Timmy and I'm hit away somewhere on a hill and I'm watching, you know, mortars, you got field artillery coming down at you, rounds coming at you, and it's indirect, right? It's not directly coming at you. It's coming over you, coming down. You can't really see where the rounds are coming from, right? Indirect fire. So why is this important? Well, one, you can kind of camp, right? You can kind of camp away from the enemy, be away from the engagement, so you can just sit there and just aim, right? And how to aim with the mortar class is you just scroll up or down on your wheel, right? And what I mean by scroll up or down is like you move your mouse up or you move it down, and it kind of just moves the motor direction. You kind of range find on it too, and how I range find usually is it will tell you uh, on the right side kind of your distance, right? Your distance of where the shot's gonna land. Usually, highly recommend you tell your teammates, hey, Teammates, you know, type in your squad chat, press enter to type everything in there. Say, hey, press V, the spot where the target's at. I usually like to range find on, on objectives, but my teammates, if they're competent, especially when I play Battle of Moscow, the German teams usually are mostly competent. They'll go and mark areas where the enemies are coming from, largest concentration of enemies, etc. Then you range find based off that. We also look at the mini-map. The mini-map will tell you where the rounds are splashing. It also tell you if you got a kill or not with it, too. So, why are people raging about it? Well, it's an engineer class, right? You can go and choose when you spec out, when you start researching, grinding out the mortar class, because at first it's gonna, it's gonna be slow. And the reason it's gonna be slow is because, well, you don't get that engineer, you're only gonna have 10 rounds to fire off, and then other than that, you're gonna have to run around and get kills. Once you get enough XP from it, then you can unlock the engineer class. And when you get the engineer class to be added to your squad, basically what an engineer class does, and if you haven't seen my videos on engineer class, please look at the description, click that video, and get, get informed on how to play engineer. Go on with this, the engineer can build resupply points, right? If I build a resupply point next to my mortar, close enough, I can literally plop my mortar down, and the mortar, the mortar fire is ridiculous. I just, the guy keeps putting rounds in it, and it keeps coming out, like, insane. It's like a rapid fire and direct fire. It's, 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 it's literally insane. And you press it down, like you can just keep resupplying. You have the ammo can right next to you. You just press out to resupply, and, and, you know, in mid shot, right, in between uh, reloads. You basically get unlimited ammo until that ammo box gets expired. Then you destroy it as an engineer, and you build another one, and you keep repeating the process. Now everyone's screaming, no, nerf the nerf the mortar class, blah blah blah, right? So I played the mortar class before, and there were times where I go on kill streaks, and there were times where I'm just hitting nothing, and usually either my team's not spotting, or I'm just not, I'm not getting any fish, right? I'm not catching any bait today or any fish. So it's a hit or miss, right? If you're playing on maps where there's clusters, especially Battle of Moscow, sometimes there's choke points and clusters like that, you plop up in mortar class and set up, you can easily like rack up. Like one game, I think I got 40 plus kills from just doing, playing the mortar class, right? So 
pretty much that's kind of like the free the free chicken on how to play the uh, mortar class. Basically, you level it up, get the engineer, plop down somewhere, look at where the objective's at. If it's outdoors or whatever, just keep raining fire down on the objective. Your teammate press B, and you see that red triangle telling you at distance or something. Kind of range find based on that. Look at the mini map, see where your rounds are landing, if they're hitting targets. If you're getting kills and just keep pommeling up. If you kill one person, there's usually going to be another squad there. If you kill two, there's usually going to be either a squad or a whole team's coming that way. And then that's when you rack up your kills. So other than that, that's just a quick rundown of how to play the mortar class. Pretty simple. Um, that's all you need to do really. And then once you get that unlocked, just play that way and you'll do fine. Stay away from the combat. Don't get too close to it. You're close enough, but the max range on this, I believe, for the Battle Moscow mode mortars right now are like 260 meters. So. Kind of get closer to the objectives just because the times on the rounds being fired get shorter and they you know you can get more kills quicker that way but other than that if you reach this point in the video uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet if you're watching my videos and everything and you're not subscribed yet why not subscribe today today's the day that i earned your subscription other than that hit that thumbs up like button comes uh comment down below if you got suggestions for future content if you want me to do a tank class video let me know because i love playing tanks and other than that I uh, hope you all have a great day and take care.